Andy seems very interested in a book which he has borrowed from the library. It's a bird book with pictures of birds beside the nests they have built. But for Sandy, the most interesting thing in the book is this picture of the different types of houses you can make for birds. And it shows the kinds of birds that will live in them. Perhaps Marilyn would like to see the bird houses too. Yes, she would. It says in the book that over 40 different kinds of birds will use nest boxes. Often they can't find hollow trees in which to make their nests, so they are glad to use houses which we build for them. Sandy and Marilyn think it would be fun to build a birdhouse, but what kind will they build? That apartment house is for purple martins. Other birds like separate houses. Each bird has its own favorite type of house. The children decide to ask their big brother Bill to help them to build a house for bluebirds. Bill is interested and seems to know just what to do. He gets the right kind of wood and they set to work. Bill uses plans which give exact measurements. While he works on the bluebird house, Sandy is going to try his hand at building a shelter for robins. He uses soft wood because it's easier to saw. Well, maybe. But Sandy will manage. Bird houses and shelters should never be made of metal, which becomes too hot in summer. Bill uses bark-covered slabs to make his house look natural, because bluebirds often nest in fence posts or hollow trees. Now he cuts a round entrance hole. His plan tells him what is the right size for bluebirds, so that larger birds won't use it. Sandy begins by nailing two pieces of wood together to make the floor and back of the shelter. Now he has the sides in place and he nails a rail to the front. This open shelter is best for birds like robins that nest on branches or under the eaves of buildings. Bill shows Marilyn how the roof must fit tightly to keep out the rain. Either the roof or the floor of birdhouses must be removable so that old nests can be cleared out each year. Sandy has the roof on his robin shelter too. A good job, and it's almost finished. Bill's almost finished too. He is drilling small holes for ventilation. In the floor, he has drilled another for drainage, so that birds who live in this house will be cool and dry. Sandy feels good, because he has made the house all himself. He finishes with a coat of brown paint, but any dull color would do. Bright colors frighten some birds. Marilyn hopes that birds really will come to nest in their houses. In early spring, they put the houses up to be ready for the birds when they arrive. Sandy's shelter can be nailed to the side of the house. Now what's Sandy doing? Well, he's helping birds to build their nests. That's a wire strainer filled with bits of string, colored wool, horsehair, and packing material. Birds use lots of short pieces when they build their nests. Well, Sandy, is there anyone in the bluebird house yet? There is. And Sandy is already planning the houses he will build next year for the purple martin. Or the tree swallow. Or perhaps the house wren. Yes, it's fun to watch birds living in a house you have built yourself. <laughs>